You're listening to the Agent and the Fan Podcast with sports agent Chris Leibel and fan Lou Columna. Welcome to the Agent and the Fan Podcast. I'm Chris Leibel. I'm the agent. I'm here with my broadcast partner, Lou Columna. He's the fan. Lou, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Do you see this? Opening day is upon us. Yes, sir. It's it's our special baseball preview show and first annual, right? So uh, we no guests today. It's just you and me, and we are going to discuss the season in front of us, kind of what our thoughts are, are going to the season. I'm going to hold you to yours. I be, I hope you hold me to mine. <laughs> what I'm going to I say, am. We'll, maybe at some point at the end we can – Kind of replay this and say, oh, my God, did I really say that? Or or we could have a mid-season All-Star break edition. We could do that, too. We'll see where so we are. Stay tuned for that stuff. But, Lou, let's let's just uh, get into it. It's it's going to be a very exciting season, 2024. Crazy off-season. Really one of the more more unusual ones we've seen. I think we've touched on a lot of it on, on the show. Um, but... As far as the the season coming, I mean, let's just let's get right down to it. For sure, for sure. I mean, I, I think we let's let's start off with the National League East because I think that to me is, I mean, I'm an American League fan, but I think that's such a great three team race, and I think they really, obviously well, the the two well, heavy. Got- you got the yeah, you got the Braves and the Phillies. I was gonna say, who's the third team? You saying I, now? You know, it's it's the Mets. It's the Mets. I I still think, you know, listen, they're not a bad team. Um, they're a solid team. You know, you got Uncle Stevie. You know, who mit, you guys have a nice farm system. Who knows if you parlay that? If you guys are close enough, you know, All Star break or after, or, hey, maybe maybe you know, you just got to get in. You know, this isn't the you know the the nineties or the early eighties where, you know, it was one winner, one winner take all. So you just got to get into the dance and anything could happen. No, I, I tend to agree with you. I think the Mets are a better team than most people are, are thinking they're going to be. Um, I think they, uh, their pitching is a little better than people think. And I think they still have a lot of star power in their lineup. The late addition signing of JD Martinez, I think is going to be a huge, huge pickup for them because he's going to lengthen their lineup. He's going to protect Pete Alonzo, um, and just really just to put piece him in the middle of the lineup. So, you know, he is a huge difference maker. This guy's a proven guy. I know he's not a kid anymore, but he's a proven run producer. And to get him into the middle of that lineup is going to be, I think, a very big addition. And so we'll see how that goes. But I, I agree with you with that. Now, people who are Marlins fans might be <laughs> kind of wondering, like, why uh, – <laughs> Why? Why we're not talking about them? And uh, but I, I tend to agree with you. I think the Marlins had a great year last year, and people and, might and say they're missing their best pitcher, right? Their best pitcher is not pitching this year. You know, True, Sandy Alcantara. You, know, you can't lose. You you can't be a team like the Marlins and lose that kind of player and not have and not no, feel it. No question. But they are a scrappy bunch, and they would are. I be totally stunned if they you know had a good year? No, I would not. Because they do have some good good pieces to the puzzle. That, but, that but would mean you. that would mean the Mets did something really wrong. <laughs> yeah, because that means they have to leapfrog the Mets, and I don't think that's happening. Yeah, but I mean, it happened last year, and people didn't think think it was coming. But that's true, we'll that's see true. what happens. But I think, look, the bottom line is the the Braves are the class, not only of the division but of baseball. Um, in my opinion, I think they're just a loaded roster. They are uh, stars throughout their lineup. Uh, well balanced. The pitching is outstanding. Uh, bullpen. They seems to really always make the right moves. Alex, my my guy Alex Antopoulos has done a great job. Um, really building off of what what John Coppola started, and it's just it's it's really just a model franchise at this point. The way they're they're they've built their team. No, without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, <clears throat> although I will say. You know the Phillies. They're they're scared of the Phillies. I Look, mean, the Phillies are a scrappy team, and they've proven two years in a row that they're going to be there. And there's no question they will. And to your point earlier, uh, once you get into the dance, they don't have to beat the Braves out over 162 games. They can just get into the dance and get hot like they did. They've done the last couple of years. So I do. I strongly believe the Phillies will be there. And you you gotta look. They got a terrific team, and obviously. 
led by Bryce Harper and Zach Wheeler and 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 you know just a lot of a lot of very good players on that team. But you got to give a lot of credit to Rob Thompson, former Yankee um, organizational guy who did so many things in that organization. This guy, what he's done for that team to pull that team together and make a run and make these runs and just have. He got it. Just it's it's amazing what he's done with that team on the field. Uh, Dave Dombrowski is always a great uh, a builder of of organizations, but but Rob Thompson really came out of nowhere. He's a guy who who it's been said that he was maybe even thinking about getting out of the game, and 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 all of a sudden he's he's one of if not the best manager in the game. Yeah, he's a he's a lifer though. He's a lifer, and you, you know you don't stick around organizations like the Yankees if you're not doing something well, you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, <clears throat> you know, if you go, you know, if you listen to a lot of the players that they played, they played with him, they played for him rather as a coach, they all love them. You know, they all love them. Yep. So, yep. you know, that, that means something, you know, it, you know, to a certain extent, obviously, you know, the X's and O's, you got to know what you're doing, but he knows what he's doing. He's it's so, I mean, so far the city fits him, the players that you, you can tell the players play for him. So I, you know, the Phillies to me really are that team that I, I there's just a good vibe about them, and like when they're in the playoff, they're they're fearless. They can they can beat anybody at any time, and I think you're right. I think Rob, but Rob Thompson, I think is a guy who he he fits every city. He's just one. Of, he's just a, like you said, he's a baseball <laughs> lifer. He's just a great baseball guy. And for me, someone who's been in the game my whole life, it's I love baseball guys. Like I, you know, I love guys like him. And I'm happy that he's getting success, and I hope that we see more of those guys um, emerging um, because I think that's 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 always a great part of the game. No, I, th I think we will. I think we will, and so we'll see that you know the season's you know like I said it's going to start soon, so that's going to be really fun to see what happens. Moving to the to the central though, uh, I really, I mean, listen, the Cardinals are the Cardinals, right? You know. Uh, Last year, I think, was a, an aberration for them. I, you know, to me, they're a much better team than what they displayed. But I, I, I love the Cubs. You know, I know. Interesting. You know, they got Cody back. And, you know, and you know they, you know, they, they feel like they've lost something. But for for whatever reason, for me, I still feel they're a team that could really, again, compete. And it's a weak division, right? It's not a powerhouse division. So if things go right for them. Well, I think they can do something. I don't. I don't necessarily think it's a weak division. I think it's just it's not like the NL East or West where there are clear cut favorites. Yeah. I think there are good teams in there. I think there are a bunch of good teams in there. Um, you know, and I think so. I don't necessarily think that it's it's that it's a weak division. I think it's actually a reasonably strong division. It's just who is going to emerge and take the lead and who's going to battle it out with that team. Uh, you know, it's funny. You mentioned the Cubs. The Cubs are interesting to me, but I think a team that, that really took a huge step forward last year, that's definitely building any better is the Reds. And the Reds. I agree. I, I agree. Nick crawl has done a great job uh, with that organization. Um, and they're a real, I mean, to me, they're a good young team. Uh, you know, they have a guy on that team, Ellie De La Cruz, that I you know you and I have talked about <laughs> off the air, who's just, you know, he's just a lot of fun to watch. He's just a terrific athlete player, he's such a rare, unique talent. Uh, and I just, I'm a huge uh, fan of his. He's just one of the more fun guys in the game to watch yeah. just because he's just, the, his tools jump, jump off the <clears throat> page at you. No, I, I agree. I mean, listen, he's fantastic. What's not to love? I mean, this guy's amazing. I love his. I love his. I love. His, I love his swag, his flair. I, I just don't know if they have enough. I like them. I like them as a talented team. I think they're up and coming. I just don't think that this is their year yet. Well, I think. I think it'll be. It'll be interesting to see what they do. I think they got some good young pitching. You know, will they pick up an, an arm or something down the stretch if if they're close again? I think they will, you know, I think they're, they'll, they'll make an effort for it. So they're an interesting team. You know, you mentioned the Cardinals, the Cardinals have a couple of, they got, they're starting to, you're starting to see some of their, their roster turnover. Some of these young guys come up. They have a couple of really exciting rookies that I really, really like. Mason Wynn is a shortstop who looks like yep. he's going to be a terrific ball player. And Victor Scott 
looks like he's just a blur. He's a super fast player, and I love the fact that, and you know me, I love the game, the fact that stolen bases are back in the game, I and I feel like this guy could be a real game changer, maybe a la Vince Coleman back in the day. Um, you know, like the old Cardinal speed teams with Lonnie <laughs> Smith and Vince Coleman and and uh, Willie McGee and guys like that. So he's he's a real interesting. I mean, those those are two real terrific young players that you mix in with the veterans like a Goldie and and Arenado and guys like that. And and, and you know, what's and that? Jordan. And Jordan, yeah, and Jordan. So I mean, they're they 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 got a lot of nice parts to the puzzle and. They're they're always a team that that seems to hang hang around, and without, so they they could without, be without you know, question. Without question, yeah. I agree with that. But do they have the pitching? Is the key? Do they have the pitching? I don't know if they have the pitching. We're gonna find out. But they're <laughs> they're an exciting they're an exciting team, and you know, pretty young. So. No, they are. They are. I, I'm excited. I, I like them a lot, and in a weird way, I actually like Milwaukee, even though you know they. You know, they got, you know, they got some rid of some of their players. I actually, I still think they're a solid team. Um, I, listen, Craig Council, great manager. Um, but I still think that they have a nucleus there in spite of losing him and losing Stern. Of, they're, of they're, they're, another, they're another team with good young players. And, and yeah. maybe not, it's funny, some of the guys you see on that team might be not be the most toolsy guys that you're like, oh my God, look at this guy run, look at this look how far he hits it. But they seem to be a lot, uh, some gritty young players that they have. And I, I really like them too, actually. I think that's a team that could surprise. I really wouldn't be surprised if any of these teams surprise. Um, they're, it's an interesting division to me. It might not be the sexiest division, but it's an interesting division, at least to me. Speaking of sexy, the National League West. I mean, good segue, Lou. Um, so, that, yeah, that I mean, look, the Dodgers uh, obviously are always the bell of the ball. They always make the biggest splashes. They spend a lot of money. Uh, they keep coming up with players. I always feel like it's a weird thing. I always feel like the Dodgers have like a 50 man roster. <laughs> I, you, if you put the game on, you put one of their games on, and you're like, wait, where did he come from? Or why is he playing? And don't they have other guys, you know, and just. It just seems like it's one. They're just that team um, over the last few years. They are, but here's the thing, though. <clears throat> to me, this this is a, a, a this is another division where they lost Soto. I still like the Padres. The Padres are a talented bunch, a talented bunch. So they still got some good quality. So, yeah, they have a good. They have a good. You know, for uh, you know, front few starters. Uh, obviously they, with Manny Machado and Tatis and, um, Padres are an interesting team. I'm glad you brought them up. I, I, they, if you look at their lineup top to bottom, this is fascinating to me. It's o almost everybody is a shortstop <laughs> yeah. originally first base, second Andrew? base, shortstop, the, uh, third base, left field, um, right field, center field. So yep, I think. Yep. Yeah, the only one is the catcher, but but um, yeah, they're a real interesting team. But I think that to me, the team, look, the Dodgers. You can't deny the Dodgers. You know, the Dodgers are gonna are gonna be good. We that's a known fact. But the Arizona Diamondbacks, what they did last year, and the fact that it it really felt like they were building something special there in Arizona, and Mike Hazen has done an awesome job there. Uh, but I feel like that they, then they went out and got Jordan Montgomery, right? Right. As the season's starting now. Yep. And to bring a guy like that in to that young roster with a team that just, just seems like they're really taking the step forward. I be honest with you. I, it would be a little surprising if the Dodgers didn't win the division, but I would not be totally shocked to see the Diamondbacks hang with them all year and maybe even come out on top. I really, really like that team. The <laughs> pitchers did a great job down the stretch. I just feel like it's a very good and, – and I've spent some time around the organization over there. They just have something special going on there. It's a really cool place, and – I feel like the Diamondbacks are a team that I really like, and I would not be one bit surprised to see them get back to the World Series again and maybe even win it. 
I, I wouldn't go that far. I, I like them. I think that, you know, I don't think they're beating the Dodgers in the regular season, which means nothing now. So, you know, I think that they have the nucleus, you know, you know, Gallon, you know, Cor- you know, Corbin Carroll, my God. I mean, he, this guy's going to be a stud. But I got to be honest, call me crazy, and this is my, might be the one, the crazy one, but I really think the San Francisco Giants, with the additions that they've made, you know, I mean, listen, you got Chapman, you got Snell, you got the, the Korean kid. You know, that's not a bad team. And again, so I keep going the back. Giants are, uh, the, get in. So the Giants are fascinating to me because they have a lot of pieces to the puzzle, but it's kind of in, they, they're coming from different places. So, yeah. you know, when it comes to teams like that, obviously they spend a lot of money to bring in some some great talent from, like you said, all over the place. The question is, how does that talent, does it, does it come together? Because we've seen both happen, right? We've seen teams that have, you know, with loaded with talented players and big contracts struggle, and we've seen talent, you know, come together and go, oh, my God, why didn't we, you know, because this, I, I, again, you're right. I wouldn't be totally shocked at the end of the year to go, oh, my God, like, how did I not see the Giants as like a team that was going to be there? They look at the, look at how many guys they have. But that said, I don't think they'll be uh, that team. And, you know, I think the Rockies are, are probably going to be in last place. And I think the Giants are probably right above them, to be honest with you. But again, a lot of talent. So, yeah, yeah. No, I, listen, I think, but that, it, I think but it's funny. If the Giants were in the central, everybody would be picking them. <laughs> <to win>. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I'm so, telling you, I'm telling you, I think. You know, they have a hungry Chapman and a hungry Snell, you know, and these guys are out there. A, they're fighting for the next contract, let's be honest. Um, they're coming off with Snell coming off a, a Cy Young season and with Chapman, a redemption season that he wants to have. So I, I think that factors in. So I, I really, you know, like I said, in a crazy way, I, well, I like okay. him. I like him. You might be right. And, and maybe Snell has a huge year. Or maybe he doesn't. I, I mean, he... He, you know, his other Cy Young year, he had a down year after it. We'll see. Um, it's going to be interesting. I think that whole division is is a wild one. And it's, it's you said, there's a lot of great teams. And if you stuck some of those teams, other divisions, you know, you'd be looking at, you know, favorites that now they're, some of them are, are in the second division there, you know, yep, as, yep. as far as prediction goes. So let, let's head on to my favorite division. Catch that. The New York Yankees, baby. We're back. Soto. That's my guy. Judge. Rizzo. Believe it or not, Verdugo. Uh, we have a solid team. Uh, but let's be honest. You know, the East is, is going to have to go through Baltimore. Even as a Yankee fan, I can yeah. admit that. You know, the, the Orioles are – they're stacked. They are stacked to the core. I mean, they're just a, an amazing team. But again, as they as they showed last year, winning a hundred games, it's 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 about the postseason, right? You yeah. know, you know the Orioles are going to make it. You know, they, I don't think they're going to win a hundred games and still be a better team than last year, but might win less games. The Yankees are going to be up there. You know, Tampa is. I mean, the Rays. I don't know how the hell they do it every year, but you know they're going to be there. Uh, <coughs> those are really to me the the, the teams. You know, to the Blue Jays. Uh, I, I mean, they got, the, they have the name power, right? You know, Guerrero, Bichette. I just don't look at them, Gossman, right? But I just don't look at them as a team that that I'm like an, an enamored with. You know what I mean? Are they going to cause damage? Yes. Are they going to hit their home runs? Yes. But I think when it comes down to it, I think they're going to be dwarfed by the Orioles and the Yankees. Well, listen. I think the, the the Orioles are obviously a team that's that's been able to accumulate a lot of talent over the past bunch of years, and it's you you started to see them. Well. Yeah, they did. Look at they had top picks, but they 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 hit on them, and I think the Orioles are a team that just started showing what they can do, and they have a loaded farm system with tons of guys, you know, pushing up the guys they have. So they're a they're always going to be, I, I, I mean, 
you coming into the 2024 season, they're they're going to be <laughs> at the top of the at the list. You know what I mean? But I feel like you're right. The Rays you, are always there, so yeah, I can't. I'm never going to sell them short. What yeah. they've done is nothing short of. Um, it's spectacular, amazing. really. Because and, and by the way, it's not smoke and mirrors. They know no. what the hell they're doing there. They know. No, what the hell they know doing. what they're doing. And you know, if you see a guy that gets let go by the Rays, it's almost like buyer beware. As far as I'm looking at it, because <laughs> I'm going like, what do they know that no one else knows? Because they always seem to get the guys at the right time and then get rid of the guys at the right time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Whatever they're doing in Tampa is 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 the right way to do things because they're hanging with the big boys uh, year after year. So they're certainly going to be there. There's no question about it. The Yankees, I think, are an improved team. Uh, the Garrett Cole injury, I do feel, is going to hamper them. Uh, when he comes back, will he come back? When he comes back, will are huge factors in there because I do feel they built that team around him and certainly they're pitching around him. Knowing that you have that kind of a workhorse every f fifth day that'll go out there, give you the innings, give you, which is why they paid him all the money they gave him, and he's lived up to it until getting hurt now. So yeah. the question is, can he come back? If he went and when will he come back? And if he does, will he be the same Garrett Cole? So <clears throat> that's going to be, to me, that's the key to the Yankees. The Yankees have certainly have with Juan Soto joining Aaron Judge and and certainly some of the other um stars they have on that team I do think they have they have the ability to be there but can they keep afloat without their number one ace and you know maybe the number one ace out there in the game well I I agree a couple of things I think the Yankee lineup for me is such a balanced lineup and I love that I mean, we we don't need to go on. Yes, we know the Yankees were right-handed, two right-handed for years. I get it. That's not the case anymore. So I don't I don't even want to bring that up. But believe it or not, I also feel Carlos Rodon is going to have a good year. You know, he, he had such a horrible year last year, and obviously, you know, you, you know, people are. I see the prognostications. People are piling on like he's not for New York. Like we don't know. He had a horrible year. By, by any standard, by the way. But are you going to tell me that Carlos Rodon is a six ERA pitcher, period? He's not. No, I, I look, I think Carlos Rodon will bounce back and have a good year. I don't think he's the next Ed Whitson. Exactly. But, so that's my point, right? So you cut, you know, you got Strowman, Rodon, Nestor, you know, Clark Schmidt having, you know, coming into now his second season where he, I mean, he, he did it. He had every start last year. I think there's, and again, you just need, to get in, you know, I don't want Garrett Cole coming back, rushing to get back and then take your time. You know, the offense in the regular season is going to take care of itself, get healthy, you know, whether that be June or July and then ramp up and then we go from there. Look, I, I think the, the Yankees will, will, will certainly be competitive. Will they take the next step and, and shoot to the top of the division? I I'm skeptical on that one. I, I you, you're not, but you're a fan. Um, so right. you, you might not be as that objective, but you did. I do have to say you've glossed over the blue Jays and I think the blue Jays will be a very competitive team too. And I would not be shocked to see them jump up and make a move there. I think Ross Atkins, my buddy up there in, in Toronto has done a great job, um, keeping them and letting them compete with the big boys, uh, you know, of the division and, and even, you know, surpassing them. And I, I feel like, They've done a nice job, and they're going to be competitive too. Uh, the Red Sox, well, they're obviously the Red Sox aren't what they used to be, and it's interest. It, it's it's really rare that they're not in this discussion exactly. uh, as as a team that we either of us think are going to get to the top. But you know what? Stranger things have happened. Who knows? I know you don't. You know you you're rooting against them no matter what. But no matter what, I, would, I feel like that would be a fun story if the Red Sox somehow emerge and I wouldn't put it past them. They, they just don't have the big, huge names and they've made a lot of moves to kind of seems like, you know, downgrade, but I, I, I mean, know, listen, sometimes those teams are the ones that compete. You just, for, you never know. The Yankees, right? Forget, forgetting about the Yankees and the Red Sox. <clears throat> They're not better than the Orioles. They're not better than the Blue Jays. 
and they're not better than. And I'm not even. I'm not even talking Yankees. They're not better than Tampa. <clears throat> so you're talking about you'd have to jump over three teams, and I just don't think that they're. they're again, they're not. They're not a horrible team. They're not going to win 60 games. You know, they may win their 78, 79 games. They're just not to me uh, a playoff caliber team. Okay, today. well that's fair. That's, that's fair. All. Uh, but moving on, let's talk American League Central. This division is uh, I don't want, I don't want to say light, but th- to me there's two teams. It's the Kansas City Royals, believe it or not, <clears throat> and I like the Detroit Tigers. Call me crazy, but I like the Tigers. Hmm. And, and I like the Tigers. Because to, of you're not a Twins fan. The Twins, to me, they're first of all. I don't, I don't. You know, you talk about Byron Buxton as an example. Can you depend on Byron Buxton? I, that's, I mean, that and that's. By the way, that's a legit question, right? Um, Carlos Correa is he the Carlos Correa from before? I don't think. I mean, he's a good player. He's a solid player. I just don't think he's that kind of player anymore. You know, their their pitching is okay. Their team, listen, if they ended up winning the division, I mean they're not they're not winning hundred games, right? If they end up winning their division, would I be shocked? No. But I tell you, I, I think the Tigers are taking a step forward. They have a talented young team, a t- really talented team. Um, and then the Casey Royals, I mean. If people are sleeping on the Royals. I think they're a solid team. And again, we're not talking about the American League East. This division can be had. So I think these guys fighting it out, and yes, no, the, the Guardians I, are okay. But I think you're right. Um, I, this is one of those divisions where I think really probably it's there to it's there to be snatched. Um, the Twins won 89 games last year, though. I still got to think they're the they're the favorite to to take the division. I, I do think you're right with the Royals. Uh, Tigers are definitely up and coming. They've done a good job with some of their young guys. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, the the Guardians are another interesting team that, that you know, in a division that probably isn't the strongest in baseball could, could certainly make some noise if things go right. And, and obviously, Lou, at the end of the day, you're – there's so many X factors that go into these things because, you know, we're looking at these teams as they stand today, as the season starts, you know, they all could look different very soon. You know, uh, there are teams that have gone through the whole season with never a starter, never missing a start, you know, a team like that will excel. Whereas you look at some of these teams where guys are always going down, you know, then they're not probably going to be there at the end of the day. So, it's it's there's so many factors that are involved but i i think you you know that this division to me is the most wide open in the game um you know, the twins snatched it last year i would put them in that um in that mix and and cer- certainly in that mix and 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 as the prohibitive favorite just based off of that and the fact that they you know they've they've added in a little bit and and i think gotten a little better so i think you know they'll be there. Can somebody you know knock them off the throne? I, I certainly wouldn't doubt. I think that's going to be a wild, uh, wild division. Again, not the sec- the two centrals are not the sexiest divisions, <laughs> but I do think there are some good young teams there in both of them. Again, speaking of sexy, the world champions. Let's go to the American League West. Texas yep. Rangers. Uh, to me, they're still the class of the West. You know, I like Seattle a lot. And you can obviously never discount the Astros, right? You know, forget about the forget about the Angels, forget about the Athletics. It's about Texas, Houston, Seattle, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I think that's that's fairly clear. Uh, in the West, the West is one division that that is is it's not the Wild West. It's it's it's, it's <laughs> not that wild at all. You know, you, you have you said. I, I mean, I agree with you. Texas is Texas. They won the World Series. Uh, they've, you know, obviously they lost the young guys, man. They They lost a big, a big guy with Montgomery leaving, but, but they, yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think Texas is the team to beat at the end of the day. I, I, I feel like uh, you said they, they, their lineup is outstanding. Uh, You know, Seager looked like Superman as, 
<laughs> as the uh, season ended, I mean, uh, Adolis, what a what a run he had the postseason. They just they they had a you know they were just terrific, uh, and I, I can't see that them falling off much uh, as long as they stay healthy. I I, do, I think I that's a team that'll that's going to be there at the end and and probably um, and certainly uh, be have a great chance to win the win the division. But listen, Houston is still Houston. They are a great team. They still have the great players. The marquee guys all around the field, the pitch strong, um, just a, a good organization as well. Yeah. As far as you know, built to win and built for longevity. But what I'm going to say about Houston and why I'm going to pick Texas over them to win the division is they had one enormous loss, and no disrespect to his replacement, but Dusty Baker losing Dusty Baker again. We talk about this. I'm an old school guy. I love Dusty Baker. Dusty Baker is a winner. He's been a winner wherever he's gone as a player, as a manager. The guy just, he's just one of those guys who just has that personality and that mag that magnetism that brings people together. And he's such a, to not have him there anymore is such a, to me, is a huge it's a loss. loss. It's a loss. And that is, will be, to my opinion, will be the difference at the end of the day. Uh, well, technically the end of the season <laughs> between them and Texas. I so, think, that, you know, and that's no disrespect to, to the new fine. manager over there. No, no, no. Listen, to me, I agree with you, but for the different, for a different reason. And that reason is, yes, there, there's all-star Hall of Fame lineup. Yes. But their farm system is horrible, right? I don't know what they would be able to add at midseason if they need to. And that's the key, you know, because as you just said earlier, the team you start with, and everybody knows this, right? The team you start off with at spring training is not the team you end up with. There's peaks and valleys, there's injuries, there's surprises, both good and bad. I just don't know if they need that one person. They, I mean, like I said, their farm system, if it's not number 30, it's, 29. And so who are you removing from your current roster to be able to get whoever it is you're going to need? Who knows? So for that reason, for me, I don't know if they can push ahead of Texas because it's Texas's farm system is, I mean, you know, the, the rookie they that they made the team, uh, why it was a white Langford is his name. I forgot the guy's name uh, is, is, is a stud. You know what I mean? He's probably going to win rookie of the year, assuming Jackson holiday, doesn't make it to the majors this year. But that to me is really the biggest difference where they're they're going to be able to add and do certain things where Houston's going to be kind of restricted with what this is. Well, you never know. You know, sometimes you take on salary from a team. It might be a salary dump and maybe they don't need a big, big of a prospect. Well, who do the Mets have? The Mets don't have anybody else to get them. <laughs> well, the owners don't well, necessarily. Maybe Pete, maybe Pete. <laughs> Well, we'll see. I think that's going to be uh, that division. And, and, and Seattle's the one team we really didn't talk about, but I think yeah, you and I, I both agree. feel the same way. Uh, you know, my old friend Jerry DePoto uh, always seems to make a lot of moves and pushes a lot of right buttons, and I think you're right. I think this is a team that uh, that will compete uh, at, the end, at, at, the, at the end of the season. They'll be there in, in the race, whether they, you know, they can get over the top will be, you know, we'll see. But I, I, I certainly think that they're a team to, to be reckoned with and that, that has a very good chance to, to get into the tournament, so to speak. I agree. And you know what I love about him? He's not afraid to make moves. No, he's, I mean, nah, they call I him Trader that. Jerry. He's always making moves. <laughs> I used to, so it's funny because I used to do, uh, being a fan, fantasy football, do fantasy football with Jerry, and uh, he made moves in fantasy football too. So <laughs> that was when he was playing. So I didn't know at the time this was going to be, you know, a precursor to a his. Precursor. Uh, yeah. No, but, yeah. I mean, him and Preller are like, they, they haven't seen a deal they don't like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're always wheeling and dealing and trying to get their teams better. And, and uh, you love that. Though. A good I job with it. Yeah. No, I mean, I listen, agree. If, you're, if you're if you're a fan, listen. If you're a fan of the Padres, you know, going back just quick, real quickly to the Padres, I and I forgot to mention this. It's almost like 
in a crazy weird way. It's almost almost like addition by subtraction. Yes, you gave up Juan Soto, but you got some really good pitching. You know, we forgot to mention Michael King. Um, and I think that that really is going to propel them to to that next level. You're talking about the Padres? The Padres, yeah. No, I think the Padres, they're, you know, they're not to be messed with because they do, their top three starters are great. And then, you, like you said, they're, they're, they made some additions. And uh, while they, they've, you know, they've seemed to divest it a little bit just because they traded Soto, you know, they, like you said, AJ is always, you know, tinkering things and, and, playing with things on the roster and he's, he's done a great job to do that and, and keep them competitive. So, uh, yeah, I mean, look, there's certainly no shortage of contenders, but Lou, my question to you is who, who do you got? Who is going to win the world series this year? Oh man. What are you doing this to me now? All right. So I don't have the Dodgers making the world series. Okay. I, I believe that this is the year the Philly pulls through. I really? honestly, I really, I just have this feeling about them. They, they have this swag about them. You know, like they're going to be fine in the regular season. Yes, they may not win the division. I get all that. But I just have a feeling that when when they're playing, like they just play with a certain, I don't know what it is. No, just, and you're actually kind of convincing me because I was going in a different direction with this. <laughs> but you you might be convincing me about the Phillies. I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see that. Yeah. Uh, I think, like you said, they're built for the postseason, and they've, you know, their fans are crazy into it, and their love, you know, what they've been able to do is is amazing. And I, I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see them take the next step and 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 do that. I'm gonna say Atlanta. It's good. I'm I'm gonna say this is finally Atlanta's year that they'll, you know, you know, take take the take charge in the playoffs and go beyond what they've done in the regular season. But I, again, it's such a crazy league right now. Gotcha. These things can all go out the window. Uh, if I had to pick a team in the AL that I thought was going to be the team that's going to go all the way, I probably would stick with Texas again. But, you know, I, the Orioles, I certainly, certainly would be surprised to see them take it to the top and, Beyond that, I, I'm not really, really sure. I mean, the Rays are always a team to be scared of. Uh, and, and in the NL, I would just say that the Diamondbacks, just yeah. be careful of the Diamondbacks. You know, <laughs> they say with snakes, you got to be careful. You never know when they're going to attack. The Diamondbacks, I you know, I, the same thing you're talking about, the Phillies, I I just saw that from the Diamondbacks last year. And I, I, I know they're it's silly to say they're a sleeper because they made the World Series last year, but – I just feel like that's a team people are sleeping on, and people think that was a fluke, and that wasn't a fluke. They're going to be better, and no, no, I don't really believe team. that. I for for the American League, you know, it's tough. Obviously, you know what I want to say, um, but I, I, yeah, I don't know. I you know, that to me in the in the American League is such a. A division it's such a crazy division because would I be shocked if the Orioles made it to the World Series? No. Would I be shocked if the Yankees made it? No. Would I be shocked if 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 Texas made it? Would I be shocked if Houston made it? None of these guys I would be shocked. Yeah. So for me, I'm gonna reserve judgment on that one. Um just because you know I, I just don't know. It, it, it's I mean but gun to my head um I, I probably would say Texas going back. Okay. I, I really I, I agree with you with that one. Um, I just the Orioles to me um, are a great team, but I think there's you know you got to get over that hump, right? And you know they got a taste of it. You know the question is, you know Texas got a taste of it too, and they won. Are they you know so that's going to be crazy. And then the only reason I didn't pick the Yankees, you know, is because we don't know Garrett Cole's situation yet. We can we can assume he's going to be back. We can hope he's going to be back. But if I knew Garrett Cole was starting the season, I would have said Yankees. Right now, I can't tell you that because I just don't know. And well, we don't need him now, come the season. But we're going to need him in the postseason without question. Well, you're certainly a big fan, so I'll say that about you. <laughs> hey, we got a good team. 
Man, we're not, you talking like, like, you're talking like we're like the Oakland A's, man. We got Juan Soto. You just picked them to win the World Series. If I they said, I said healthy. we're the four teams that could win the World Series. Okay, but you said that you would have them in there. Okay, I you, would, I would. Oh, if you're saying one of the four them. teams. Oh, I thought you said you'd have them in the World Series. No, if we, if we had, okay. I just said, I would have them right, in the that's better. World that's Series better. if we had and we knew what Garrett Cole was going to be this year. Yeah. You know, but All right. we don't know yet. Well, well listen, see. Lou, this has been awesome. Great job by you. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to uh, catching you on some of these at the end of the year. So we'll, 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 this, this, this episode will not be pulled down anytime soon. But thank you guys for joining in. It's been great. We will see you guys next week. We'll have a special guest. Take care.